Imagine this. One night you go to sleep. You close your eyes. And as you fade into the darkness, you open your eyes and your reality has completely changed. Hope you're having a great day or a great night. We're going to go ahead and get into this. Today we're talking about reality shifting. Now we're going to get pretty deep into all of this, but we're going to go ahead and get right into the video and then I'll be right back with you. What is shifting? When I searched it up originally, I saw a lot of older people talking about shifting as a sort of mindset, but it's actually completely different, making those videos not very reliable. Also, I found most of them to be pretty dramatic, so I didn't really take them that seriously. Reality shifting, or just shifting, is the act of moving your consciousness to a whole other reality that you've envisioned, which can be completely different from your current life, or very similar. For example, you can shift to any book or any TV show. You can even shift to a world that you've exclusively created while daydreaming. All you're doing is shifting to your desired reality. And yes, you can change what you desire as much as you like whenever you'd like. Before I forget, some terms that I might be using are DR, which means desired reality, CR, which means current reality, and WR, which is waiting room. When you shift to your desired reality, you can change your appearance, your class, and your nationality. Why? Because those are material traits. They are changeable. People change their appearance all the time through surgery or makeup. People become citizens of other countries daily. It's not impossible. That's why in your desired reality, you can change or alter any aspect of your life. Basically, you become a Sims character. Shifting isn't rocket science. Anyone can do it. We're actually shifting dozens of times in every moment that we're alive. And most of us don't even realize it. Every breath we take is shifting. Every time we blink, we're shifting. This is because every time we complete an action, whether involuntarily or not, we open up another reality in which we didn't take that action, where we didn't take that breath, or we blinked a second later, or a second before. If this concept is kind of hard for you to understand, here's an easier example. You enter a flower shop. What do you buy? You could buy one rose or twelve. You could buy daffodils or carnations. In fact, you could decide that you don't even want to buy anything in the store, so you just turn around and leave the shop. Each of those are possibilities. Now this is an interesting concept in shifting realities. Every now and then I try to open up on this channel, and I wanted to open up about this particular perspective. I have vastly altered my reality today. I know I'm about to go into a little bit of a thing. Just give me a second now. Give me a second. I applied for a job that will begin my journey back home. As you guys know, that's where I'm trying to get to. Well, I set up a plan and I had it in place and I made a horrible mistake. See, I was applying for a job that said they were hiring me back and we can get things going. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was so confident in myself when I applied. I actually never applied. I simply just filled out a profile and that job actually got offered to somebody else because I never actually applied. Now, what can I do? I live in a small town where there's not many jobs. So guess what I got to do? I got to alter my reality and work at a gas station for less money. That has now added on, who knows, two, three, four months of me staying in this town and trying to get out of here. So I completely altered my reality off of one mistake. Now, obviously, shifting reality is a lot deeper than what I'm saying right now. We're going to get into that, but I'm just trying to say, I have to, you know, think about, does every breath we take, 
does every mistake we make alter our realities? Well, man, I gotta say it did for me. Who knows where my life goes from this point on? But, you know, let's continue. <laughs> I'm done. Now we're gonna go over some of the methods that can help you get into the right mindset so you can possibly have your own reality shift. The Raven Method. To do this method, you need to lie down in a starfish position with none of your limbs touching. From there, you count up to 100 or down from 100. Try to be as still as possible. You're trying to make your body fall asleep, but keep your mind awake. Along the way, while you're counting, you should be saying affirmations every five counts or so. Affirmations are basically little sentences that you say in order to keep yourself focused and concentrated on just one task, and that's just focusing on which reality you want to end up in. Think of it like a mantra, repeating it in your mind so that you just become focused on one thing and all other thoughts, all other doubts are just pushed aside. Affirmations include, I am shifting, shifting is easy, I am weightless, I am more than a physical body, etc. If you have like a different name that you want to be called in that reality, you can be like, I am so and so, I am this age, I look like this. Remember, the reason you're trying not to move is because you're trying to stimulate your mind and not your body. Your body is something physical, so you have to make sure it falls asleep so that the part of you that isn't physical, which is your mind, can freely move. After you count up to 100 or count down to zero, you should feel kind of floaty and a bit detached. Sometimes the room feels kind of spinny. From there, you should start affirming and visualize yourself doing something that you would be doing in your desired reality. For example, I'm just gonna take Hogwarts. Just imagine yourself taking a potions class in whoever's class. I'm sorry, I literally just never watched Harry Potter, so I cannot tell you. One of those. Let's say you're going to anime. Naruto, you're in someone's village doing something. Keep thinking about that and related things to your desired reality until you fall asleep. And remember, you cannot move until you fall asleep. And that is probably the hardest part of this method. Make sure that throughout this entire process, you don't open your eyes. When you go to sleep in that position, you should open your eyes again and be in that desired reality. Now, the second method is for people who have enfantasia or have difficulty visualizing, like myself. It is called the pillow method. Simply you write out where you want to go, what you're going to do, what sort of things are going to happen when you go to that desired reality, your appearance, and a backstory if you want it. Then before you go to sleep, look at something that reminds you of that place, whether it be pictures on Pinterest or listening to music that you think has the vibe of that reality. Then reread what you wrote a couple of times and put it under your pillow. Say some affirmations like, I am in blank, I am blank, then just go to sleep. You should wake up in that reality. I don't know if there's an anime world I would ever want to wake up in. That's not much of an anime guy or a cartoon guy. Matter of fact, I don't even watch TV shows. I am YouTube all the way. So I guess if I could wake up anywhere, I'd wake up in a YouTube video of my own. So anyway, <laughs> what comes to my mind is how people do this in their actual life. With meditation or the more popular manifestation with the law of attraction. The difference mainly being is that you are still in your current reality. Reality shifting is about going to another reality. Now, I think we all do this in our own way. Do you not imagine yourself being wealthy and being able to travel the world, buy a nice house, and take care of your family? This is normal to dream. The problem is most people never make it out of their mind. I feel the same way. It is hard to pursue another reality when you feel trapped. The bills are piling up, the car is having trouble, and your job is driving you crazy. People tend to take two routes. The first route is being delusional. And that is thinking you're going to manifest a million dollars or you're going to apply for a job that you're not qualified for or you're going to blow up on TikTok or YouTube or Instagram and become the next whoever. This route is delusional not because the dream is unattainable. It is because it normally comes with no plan at all. And we believe that we don't have to work hard to make this dream happen. We're going to dive a little bit into that later. Let's move on to the second route. This is the route where most people give up. They accept life as it is and they try to be as happy as they can. They'll go as high as they can in a company, but they're okay if they never move up. I have done this myself. The reason is it gets hard to keep falling on your face and pushing towards your goals, especially as you get older. I am in my 30s and I have watched countless YouTubers who talk about how much they have grinded and how much time it took for them to succeed. And the same YouTubers are like 20, 21, and 22. I literally watched a 22 year old YouTuber with a million subscribers talk about how hard they were grinding when they were seven. 
seven years old. They were like, man, back in 2009, man, I was struggling. And I did the math that I'm like, you were seven years old, my guy. That's crazy. And so when you look around, you start thinking, man, everybody I see who's ever made it either started when they were young or they're in their 20s and they're super successful. And so I find myself just being like, you know what, I'm just going to give up. But we'll get more into that later as well. I'm just trying to give you the two paths, delusional or give up. And a lot of people truly believe that if they don't succeed in their 20s, that they've completely failed. Guys, that is completely coming off of social media. Social media has fooled us into believing that. In any other world, in the business world, corporate world, blue collar, wherever you want to name it, the people who tend to be more successful are the people who are older. But we've gotten taught because we're in our 20s, oh, you need to just go ahead and give up. Once you hit 30, downhill, just quit. Trey, why are you saying all this? What does it have to do with reality shifting? Well, who tends to do a bunch of the reality shifting? It tends to be the teenagers. They think that the reality can never get better. And I know there are some horrific realities out there for people, but there is a way to change it. But this is a form of escapism. I'm not saying that's always the case, but I am saying that the people who tend to do this tend to be people who don't see another way out or they don't like their current reality. Now we're going to go ahead and get into the next part. This is about scripting your entire reality. My name is... Rochelle Cullen. The next thing I'm gonna write down is my age and gender. I am going to say I am a 16 year old girl. Another thing you can include in this category is an accent. I want to give myself a British accent because I think it'd be really cool to be English, not gonna lie. With the accent, you can also script whatever languages you want to speak. So I am going to say I am fluent in English. French and Spanish. I think it'd be really cool to speak three different languages. The next thing you can script is your birthday. I'm just gonna pick a random birthday. I'm just gonna say my birthday is October 14, 1990. In my CR, I am a spring baby, but I thought it'd just be really cool to be an autumn baby. The next thing I'm going to script is my appearance in my DR. For your appearance, I have a couple of ideas for you guys. You can change your skin color, your eye color. You can also write down your skin texture if you have acne or no acne. If you want, you can also give yourself a tattoo. You can also describe your hair. You can change your hair color length or texture. You can also script your height and body build. The last thing I can think about is shaving. So if you are someone who has a lot of body hair and you don't want to worry about shaving in your DR, you could say, I don't get much body hair. Those are only a few examples though, but you can change your appearance however you want. To keep this short and sweet, I am not going to write this out in full sentences. Because I'm a vampire, I'm going to say my skin color is pale. For my eye color, I want it to be gold. I don't have a tattoo myself, but I think it'd be really cool to have a tattoo in my DR. So I'm going to script that. Where should I put my tattoo? I think it'd be really cool to have a rose tattoo under my arm on my ribs so it would be like somewhere right here i really don't know why i picked a rose i just think it would look cool for my hair i'm gonna say i'm a brunette the texture will be silky and i think i want my hair shoulder length for my height i don't want to be too tall so i'm just going to say i am 5'5 five five. for body build i'm gonna just say athletic the next thing you can script is your personality and character traits. Some examples are friendly, humorous, smart. You can be an introvert or extrovert. There is also being curious. You can also be fun or a jokester. You can also be mysterious, sensitive, a fashionista, or you can have a photographic memory. I'm going to say I'm friendly. I want to be funny, smart. Can I say I'm half introvert and half extrovert? I want to be fun. I want to be fashionable, like Alice. And I think I will give myself a photographic memory as well. Now, as you can see, this gets kind of wild, really wild. And I always noticed when I was watching a bunch of these scripting videos, I learned that it is normal to make yourself perfect in these realities. Perfect height, perfect build, and also have the perfect traits, which I think is something that you have to do in scripting. Remember, this is about your desired reality, even if this is only for one night. Now, take a step back. Have you ever been talking to somebody in your dream and they say something rude to you? Maybe something like you're ugly. Well, that is you saying that to yourself. 
You create all the dialogue in your dreams subconsciously. This is something that I think about a lot in my dreams. I tend to see myself as a failure and this is normally spoken out through someone in my dreams. This is something I have to work on because though it is true I am a failure up to this point, it does not mean I will always be a failure. So unlike in our desired reality, maybe we can make ourselves better, can't make ourselves perfect, but we can become the best version of ourselves and we can let that be our script to a fulfilling life. That's what I love about at least this whole concept is that you can script out whatever reality to you want it to be. Now, obviously, in our current reality, that is much harder to do, but you can plan, you can try to get things done and become that best version of yourself. So I thought we'd do a quick little exercise. Bear with me now. A quick little exercise. I'm going to play a quick video. It's only going to be about 60 seconds long. I want you to close your eyes and imagine where you could be in six months from now. Six months. Just imagine if you did the best you could, where would you be six months from now, realistically? Let's give it a shot. Now, what you just listened to was what some people use to go into their own reality shift or some people use this for lucid dreaming. But let me ask you a quick question. Was that hard to think a few months ahead? Most likely it was. I think when we see ourselves as successful, it is normally down the line. We always see it like two, three, four or five years down the line. But what about the journey? Could you see yourself saving up three paychecks and having a small saving? Could you see yourself completing your first semester at school? Could you see yourself at the gas station talking to Mike about the sandwiches you just got in? Oh, that, that's me. Sorry. Got a little bit too specific. Anyway, my point is that a lot of people fail because they get ahead of themselves. They don't want to think about it all right now. They want to think about it's all going to happen now or never. These individuals who have reality shifted do not do this every night. It may be months or years in between shifts. However, these people practice often, so maybe even for five seconds, they can make it. You can practice making videos, drawing, dancing, skating, or whatever, so that when the opportunity comes, you can be ready. Then you can tell the whole world about your story about reality shifting, <laughs> or tell your story about how you became a better skateboarder, how you open up your own flower shop. It's just beautiful to see that people who do believe in the whole reality shifting take all these months all these months to just have a few seconds in this new reality of theirs but i think in our own current reality we don't do this we don't think about working a job we don't like even if it's just for a year or two no we got to make it now and if we don't make it now i got to quit my job so i can go pursue no take a step back breathe do your hobby do your hobby as often as you can and practice as much as you can the day will come that you can rest, but you have to keep going and keep scripting and keep imagining your life in a brand new light. Now, we're about to get into something that's pretty dang deep, and that is called perma shifting and respawning. What we're going to do is we're going to listen to a quick video on it, and I'm going to break it all down. We'll hear another video, and then I'll break more of it down. But please buckle up and get some popcorn because this is going to be crazy. What is perma shifting? Perma shifting is when you shift to, let's say, let's like if you're shifting to your DR that is Hogwarts, just gonna use that as an example. Um, it means that you're gonna shift there forever. You are not coming back. Um, at least you don't plan to come back. You just want to stay there, live like kind of just change your life in a way, um, and be a totally different person or whatever. You want to just you want to live in that DR instead of this one. You're just basically just like 
I like that life better than this one. I don't like this anyone anymore, but you still want to have the option of coming back, right? So it's not like you aren't totally like getting rid of this reality. You're just like, we're putting that on hold because uh, no bueno. Now it's a common, a common, um, how do I say this? Misconception that it's permanent shifting is a bad thing to do. And I would say it's not bad, but there are pros and cons, uh, just like with everything that we should talk about. So let's kind of get into that. So I have my computer here. So some of the pros that I was talking about earlier is you get to experience a whole new world. And I mean, that's kind of with every like shifting in general, you always do get to experience a whole new world. And if that's what you're shifting to, um, cause the, all the many things you get to experience is truly incredible, but it basically, it lets you have this ability of living a different life. So, but another, I'd say a con, uh, not a con, but a pro that um, when it comes to perma shifting that you probably won't find in reality, or no, sorry, respawning, is that you can always come back here. Uh, like if, you, if it ever goes wrong or if there's ever a problem or maybe this isn't the life you wanted, um, whatever the reason could be, you can always come back and just be like, yeah, so... That. One thing I wanted to mention that I didn't mention earlier was that lucid dreaming and reality shifting are not the same thing. A lucid dream is a dream. Reality shifting is reality. It's real. It's not fake. It's not something made up. You're literally going into a different reality that is not your current one. Okay? Now, let's talk about this perma shifting. Now, perma shifting is where you can move back and forth between your DR or go back to your CR. Now, with perma shifting, that means you can do it forever. You don't ever have to come back, but you do have that out that if you were to die in your DR or something like that, you come back to your current reality. This is not too common as most people can barely shift consecutively, let alone permanently. This type of shifting is controversial as some people believe there is no way you can live your life in DR for this long. You must come back to your CR when you wake up. And I'm putting that in air quotes, wake up. Because once again, it's not a dream, it's reality. However, this has to come with an open mindset. If you believe that your clone or your physical body, don't worry, we'll get into the clones, cannot live without your consciousness, then obviously, yes, to you, this is impossible. You'll never believe in shifting if you believe that these people are simply dreaming. Or if you believe there's only one reality, there's not multiple realities for your current soul. <laughs> I know it's a lot. And if you've never heard of this, I know I may be confusing you. But just listen to me and we're just going to walk through this together. I got you. Now, before I continue, I have to talk about clones because when I start talking about respawning, it's not going to make any sense. So let's go talk about clones and then we'll get back to respawning. When you shift and this is mostly based on the multiverse theory. So if you're a subconscious theory shifter, this just might not be for you i know subconscious theory shifters not all of them even believe in clones so that could just be like out of what your shifting beliefs are in i've personally had experiences with clones and i've met a bunch of other people who have had experiences with clones so i am just going to be telling you the information that i know based off of those experiences when you shift for example because some people will ask like can i shift without a clone hypothetically yes but no at the same time because when you shift you're not just like appearing in the middle of everything like that your dr's already been happening like you already exist there you're just not aware of it and that's the entire reason why you want to shift there so you can be aware of it and experience it and like be aware that you are experiencing it the person that you're going to shift into is called a clone and a lot of people get confused by this term i honestly hate the term for it because i feel like it shouldn't be called that at all but that's like a clone technically as well is your dr self because that's you but you're not aware in that moment and once you shift to that your clone is then here if that makes sense because you still exist here you didn't just vanish from this reality when you shifted that would literally be impossible you know it's just you're not aware your clone is going to just be like you, act like you. Your clone is literally you. So you don't have to be like, oh my gosh, what if my clone like goes to work or goes to school and does this crazy thing? I would, it, it would, it will never happen. Your clone is you. I mean, unless you would do that crazy thing, then like maybe you, you do have something to worry about, but, <laughs> but honestly, your clone's just going to act like you. And the worst thing that your clone will do is anything that you would have done in that situation. <laughs> 
a lot of people ask if you like remember what your clone does i personally didn't really like remember a lot i had like a brief history of it because when you shift you can script in the leva app or the leva journal which will give you play by plays of stuff that is happening in your current reality my leva journal personally just like kind of summarized it very blandly like it would be like i woke up i went to work but back then my secret life wasn't even that interesting so that's probably why i was just like updating very blandly my life was bland here at the time I wish it was now sometimes your clone could hypothetically yes clean your room for you my my clone has cleaned a little bit of my room but i my clone never finished it so i'm just gonna assume that like i got unmotivated and quit i don't know but it sounds like me the room wasn't finished but it was cleaner when i shifted back so like my clone obviously cleaned some of it up thank you clone I will go more into clones when I'm talking about respawning, but I will give a brief thing about this because it's very hard to understand. I know, trust me. When you have a clone, some people agree on subconscious. Some people agree that there is no subconscious. It's all about awareness. So this is where people tend to go left or go right. So when you are doing a desired reality, you already live in that reality it's just your awareness is now there. You are now actually living within it. It's not that it never existed. You yourself existed in that reality. Dang it, hit my mic. Sorry, guys. You existed in that reality. Your physical self existed in another reality. Your awareness is just not there. So when you are to leave your body during perma-shifting, your clone will continue to do whatever it does. Now, some people believe you can script it and some people believe that it's free will of whatever your clone will do. Because technically, what people will say is that we are clones. Like, I'm a clone and you're a clone. We are just aware of this moment at this time. There is a different version of ourselves somewhere else in the world and that may have left us during permanent shifting. So we are clones ourselves living in this awareness and we have free will. Woo, I know that's a lot to get through. So that's how people see clones. Like clones are not just robots or something. They don't act any differently than your normal self would have acted. So it's just like you're living life as usual, but you're not aware of yourself being there. Okay. I have to relate this to the matrix. So some people understand. So some people are living in the matrix and some people are living outside of the matrix in a different version of themselves. So it's different. It's not like there's only one way out of the matrix. There's thousands of ways out of the matrix. It's just like how if you guys who watch Spider-Man multi-universe or whatever, I'm not that into it, but I understand the concept. There is multiple Spider-Mans, different versions of Spider-Man. It's the same thing with you. In every life, you may end up doing something somewhat similar to what you are, but there are different current realities for you. That's all it is. I hope that makes sense, but we're going to go ahead and get into respawning. Respawning is basically when you shift without the intention of ever going back to your CR. You shift to your DR, but you say, um, let's not go back because I hate my CR or whatever the reason is. And you cut all ties um, to your current reality. Um, and there are different ways of doing this. Most of them rely on just intention, but uh, basically just you are actually unable to ever go back to your current reality or your original reality, whatever you want to call it. It just, it, yeah, you can never come, you can never go back. Is it bad? Um, again, not always. There are pros and cons. Again, pros, you get to live a, you get to live a new life, you get all these like new experiences, new pr perspective, all the same stuff. Um, and it gives you the chance to kind of just change, li live a life that you want to live instead of a life that you really couldn't choose. Like you didn't choose to be here. I don't believe at least that you, that us, us as humans chose this place to live. Um, again, that's open for debate. I just don't think so. He pretty much goes on to say that if you were to try to come back to this current reality, there's no way to come back. You have severed ties. You can come back to something close, but not exactly as it is. Okay. So that is what respawning is. It is cutting all ties and all memories. So now I want to go back to those two routes I talked about earlier. So you had that first route, right? We become delusional with no plan to become a millionaire and we become a successful musician or we become a streamer. 
I will admit, I used to fall into the category of those who really hated those people who got famous on TikTok for dancing. I'm not really that bothered by those streamers who get famous for doing terrible things because I know violence, sexual things, and bad behavior will always get attention. And I don't care about people who make money, which I consider is blood money, off of other people's pain or loneliness or whatever. I don't want to live that life. I don't respect that life. However, I hated seeing people who get millions of dollars or seeing somebody just become successful at all. And all they did was do a little dance and they were at the right place at the right time. However, I had to stop thinking that way and now I wish the best for them. Regardless, I don't care how they got the money. If they did a silly dance, if they did one silly thing, don't care. As long as they made life changing money, I'm happy for them. I think that's where the delusion comes in. We think if we had done the same dance or we had looked a certain way, we would have the same success. It's simply not true. I have seen so many different people change their lives who come from different shapes, forms, and different environments and backgrounds. But what if you could respond and everything could change? Some people believe responding means that you have to take your life in order for you to cut off your own CR. But that's simply not true. You let another version of yourself take over your current reality, which is what I was talking about earlier. Whether you believe in respawning or not, you would never know because those who are living in a new life will seem the same to you. Remember, in respawning, all memory is cut off as well. So there's no possible way to know if you're talking to a person who respawned because they don't remember. I understand people will see this as ridiculous and dangerous, but I would encourage you to at least understand what you don't like before you attack the mindset. I'm simply saying, if it was possible, and not necessarily taking all your memories away and messing up your current reality, but what if you could just sit down and say, I am going to change my life from this point forward. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. You don't have to map it out two, three, four years in the future. You sit down and say, next month, I want to do this. You write it down. You make it happen the next month. Then you keep going from there. You just keep scripting month by month by month to allow yourself to make small changes. And next thing you know, who knows, five or 10 years, you could wake up in a completely different reality than if you had never tried to make something happen. That's all I'm saying about this stuff. I'm not saying you have to believe in it, but I'm saying the concept is something that you can grasp onto. Now, the second route, the second route was giving up, accepting life as it is and try to be as happy as possible. And this is where most people go. I look at so many YouTubers who are much younger than me and are successful and made it happen. And it made me believe that it was over. I thought that I could live a different reality and that I'll never be a YouTuber and I'll never make it. I was going to work my nine to five and make the best of it. That's how it was for me just a few months ago. Then I started putting all my feelings and everything on paper. I just started writing. I wrote a whole mini story and everything and I was just loving it and I enjoyed it. And then I started watching videos and I just started writing out my thoughts. And this all started with me just having the mindset of, well, what if there was a reality where I wrote scripts? What if there was a reality where I just wrote and talked them out? What if there was a reality where I didn't just react to videos? What if I could do what I've seen these other YouTubers who are video essay people do? And I just try. It may look stupid. I may sound dumb. It may not be the best. But if I could just find a reality where I can do what I want to do and write what I want to write and just put it all on paper, what would that look like? And here we are, at least right now. I do plan for this to get bigger and better, but it all started with me just saying, what if there's another way to do this? What if I could just shift my reality another way? Now, does this mean I'm going to succeed on YouTube? Nope. But at least in this reality, I have something I care about, and that is writing and teaching. And I cannot express how much love I have found in going through all these different topics and learning about all these different things. So I got to say this. Permit shifting and respawning is what made me interested in this topic because just the concept of just changing your life to whatever your desired reality is, is possible. Maybe not going to Hogwarts and maybe not going to Twilight, but you can do something different. You can drop the weight. You can decide to write, even if people think you're stupid. It's all of these things that I decided to go through and do. I was told many years ago when I was first in college, Trey, 
you should be a writer. And I told myself, that is not my reality. I'm going to go be a doctor because that makes money and that'll make my family proud. But people kept saying, Trey, you are a great writer. You should go this route. And it's so funny how different my reality would have been had I done that. But now I'm living as if that had happened. What if I decided to be a writer and teach people my failures, my tribulations through topics and videos? What if I just tried it? And today, my reality has changed. I'm not here to say my life is going great or even better. I told you about the job that I lost. However, my happiness is continuing to get better. Even as I read the script out to you now. However, I do have to look at the other side of reality shifting. So we're going to listen to a video from somebody who considers themselves a former shifter in the problems with reality shifting in general. As a person, I've never really been comfortable with myself. I think I have some degree of facial dysmorphia and an overall disbelief that this is my face. But in a more general sense, I don't like being aware of myself or my existence or the notion that I can be perceived. I've also never wanted to be in the present. My mental time has either been spent obsessing over the past, fixating on the future, or daydreaming in another realm. 2017 was a very emotional year for me and it was when my daydreaming was at its worst. There were times when I would just freeze and stare into one spot, completely detached from reality, and when I came back, I had no way of knowing how long I had been there. Even when I wasn't using it as a way to escape from negative situations or emotions, even the good things in my life would trigger daydream episodes. I had basically trained myself to daydream anytime my mind wasn't occupied by something else. And given my ADHD and aversion to boredom and the empty space in my brain, it happened a lot. There was one time when I was trying to do the dishes and I tried to see how long I could go without daydreaming or scripting scenes in my head, and I didn't last two minutes. There was another time where something good had happened and I just sat there on a beanbag chair and I couldn't do anything for about two hours. I was just daydreaming and that was it. Now daydreaming itself isn't bad. Fan fiction itself isn't bad. Meditation isn't bad. These can be great outlets for a person to work through problems. I will give more thoughts on the escapism here in a moment, but let me say this. I can completely relate to body dysmorphia or face dysmorphia. I have hated myself for a long time. I struggle to look in the mirror and I rarely see my face, especially since I no longer put my face on videos. Some days are fine and other days I struggle. This is also why I struggle with my weight as I have a hard time believing that I'm fat. And I know that sounds silly, but in my head, I'm this muscular guy who loves the gym. But in reality, I'm fat and I'm short. Whenever I lose weight, I still hate the way I look so much that I start falling back into bad habits because I hate that I can't eat normally without binging. It drives me crazy. So I create a reality where I can eat whatever I want and then Voila, I'm fat again, okay? I've lost 100 pounds, I lost 110 pounds, I lost 120 pounds, but that dysmorphia has always led me to hate myself and I just quit looking in the mirror and I just go right back to my old ways because I just think to myself, like, even if I lose the weight, it's some sometimes in my head I think, if I lose the weight and I still hate my body, that's going to suck, man. That's really going to suck. So I might as well have a reason to hate my body. I hate my body because it's fat. I don't want to just hate my body just because it's not perfect. And that keeps leading me back to the same place. All right, let's get back to the video. The hardest part about observing the shifting realities trend is trying to make the argument in favor of abandoning the daydream and embracing reality. Because what are they embracing? Society collapsing? The planet boiling? The last two years have been filled with plague, outrage, and isolation. I understand that many people have nothing good to return to when they leave their dreams and wake up in reality. I can't imagine being a teenager during this time. It must be overwhelming and exhausting. So I don't really know what to say. I don't want to be living through these things either. I understand why you'd rather imagine that you're living at Hogwarts or fighting crime with the Avengers. Transitioning from being a person who is heavily dependent on daydreaming as a coping mechanism is tricky. There are going to be times when your imagination simply isn't enough, and that's painful. There are going to be times when your flaws or circumstances 
or mental illnesses can't be fought back with a daydream. And if that's your primary coping mechanism, it's very difficult to keep from spiraling. I can say that from experience. The most difficult thing is walking away from creating, because that's where the joy is. You grow attached to the characters you imagine interacting with, the plot you've built from the ground up, the new self you've constructed. But you can create outside of your head. It won't be perfect, it may be clumsy, it won't be like you imagined it, but it will exist it'll be tangible. So I'd say don't stop creating. Let yourself create in the real world. Right now, I am healthier mentally than I've ever been, so I have no need to escape from reality, although I have plenty of reasons to. I will always treasure these stories I created with my sibling when I was younger. That escape from reality was a natural, creative response to what we were going through, and it allowed me to have some fond memories of that year. But hiding in a fictional alternate reality isn't actually what got me through that difficult time. It was the bonding with my sibling and the collaboration on a story together that was a true coping mechanism. And I imagine that's part of the reason why people in the shifting community cling to the idea, even after failing to shift for long periods of time. Interacting with and comforting each other while they search for relief probably does them some good, but the downsides to shifting as a coping mechanism are just too harmful. I know I'm not going to convince people who are really hardcore into this or are successfully profiting from it and making content out of it. I get it. My hope is that the people who are using it as a coping mechanism can begin to separate themselves from their daydreams and channel that energy into the current reality. Find a community that isn't centered on shifting, build a support network, get a therapist. It's going to be difficult work, but if someone who was as lost in their own head as I was can find their way out, you can too. So there is this escapism that comes with reality shifting in wanting to get away from it all. There is this thought that runs through my head from time to time. I like to say, what if the pain never stops? What if this is it? What if you wake up and life simply sucks? You're broke. Everything falls through and you end up selling Mike that sandwich every night at the gas station for the next 30 years. Here's the thing. This is your reality. There will be some people whose life is nothing but drug addiction exploitation, ignorance, and bad luck. Some people will die, and life will never give them a break. There was no success in their life, but somehow, some way, they smiled when they could. They laughed when they could, and cried when they could. Life has to be about more than, I need my life to be easy. Because easy is relative, and no one can guarantee it. You could gain all the wealth and die from a car crash the second you get it. I'm not saying you can't pursue your dreams and passions. I'm not saying you can't fall in love and build a beautiful family. I am saying, don't let the seconds pass you by because you don't want to feel the pain. Whether you believe in reality shifting or not, your reality is your reality until the lights turn off. So should you try reality shifting? I don't know. Look into these things and ask yourself, why do you want the reality shift? And I believe eventually you will find the answer. Thank you guys for watching. Much love. Goodbye.